Hello again, this is Jeffrey Smedberg. I'm your host this evening with Voices from the Village program. This evening we are discussing the Real Work Labor Film Festival. This is the second half hour. If you are just joining us, I wanted to, Daniel and Sarah, please say hello. Hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> nice to be here. This evening we are sharing with the audience some of the films that we have reviewed and we really liked and are planning to bring to you either uh, in a virtual event around our traditional time of May 1st, International Workers' Day, or later when we're allowed to have in-person events, we will do some uh, live uh, film screenings. So in the second part of the show, I would like to mention the first film that we're going to discuss, which is called Summoned, Francis Perkins and the General Welfare. And Sarah has done some study of that film, and I'd like to let you say something about it. Yes, I, I'm looking forward to showing this film. Uh, this film was going to be shown by the Pajaro Valley teachers out in uh, Watsonville at the Cabrillo College. Uh, this film is about Frances Perkins, a woman who, as a young woman in her teens, witnessed a Triangle Shirtwaist fire, a dramatic fire that happened in a in a a clothing factory in New York where the window where the doors had been shut and um, to keep the women from going out smoking and stealing clothes when a fire started women leaped to their death and and Frances Perkins witnessed witnessed this as a small as a young girl she uh, later went on to most notably be the first woman to serve on a presidential cab cabinet and during this was during the uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt's time and was instrumental in working on the minimum wage, the eight hour day, unemployment insurance. So she's, just, so she's a noteworthy woman. I'd never heard of her before. I'm no, glad no, she's no. getting the notice that she deserves. Well, let's watch the trailer. In the fall of 1932, the grand democratic experiment was failing, and America was in free fall through the Great Depression. With local and state governments out of money, and with millions starving, homeless, out of work, and out of time, more people were leaving the country than arriving. Then, in November, the American people petitioned Franklin Delano Roosevelt to reorient the role of government by invoking the constitutional promise to promote the general welfare. His presidency would transform America, but he didn't do it alone. Only a dozen years after women gained the right to vote, the first woman named to a presidential cabinet would inspire a profound change in the way that Americans lived their lives. American life today would be unrecognizable without the architecture to it that, that Francis Perkins supplied. There is no contribution that a cabinet member has made in the history of this country that has had the lasting kind of effect on all of us and the way we live than what Frances Perkins did. She inherited part of a tradition of service. She was its caretaker for a little while and she passed it on to another generation. And she had that burdensome conscience that drove her to get something done that would probably made the most significant difference in the life of America than almost anything you can name. And so there was a timelessness and a transcendence to the quality of her work, just a natural part of the fabric of American society, right? Societal insecurity could not have been higher than in the Depression. And there was a general sense that we have to do something. We have to do something. And so into this enormous, churning, seemingly endless, insecure society, they introduced the notion of a secure society, social security. I 
do not believe that the Social Security Act would have made it into law without Francis Perkins. Prior to the creation of Social Security, only one out of every 100 Americans had any provision at all for retirement. Their bodies worn out in poverty and misery, many of them shipped to what we knew as the poor farm, warehouses of death, where most of the elderly went to live and to die. Poverty is tough, misery is difficult, Pain and suffering are hard, but nothing equals the loss of self-esteem uh, in a person's life. And Francis Perkins changed that. What Francis Perkins tried to do was to speak to a level of discontent, a level of unhappiness, a level of misery in the moment in time in which she was operating, she was just an unusual figure, unusually committed, unusually brave, alone in a world full of men, moving into a sphere that no woman had ever moved into before. I think for all that, we owe her a good deal of thanks. During her 12 years as Secretary of Labor, Frances Perkins suffered public insults, attacks on her manner and dress, lies about her birthplace and ethnicity, death threats, and finally, an unsuccessful impeachment attempt. Through it all, she worked 15-hour days to shorten work hours for others. She crusaded for the poor and homeless, even as her own home was broken by disease and separation. She was able to help weave the torn fabric of a failing democracy into a new design for government that would change life for every single American. She was a woman of vocation, of service. She was not a woman of selfishness. She was not a woman of decadence. She was not a woman of scandal or dishonesty. And she cared about having an inner constancy and an inner integrity to herself. So she was not scattered. And so the outward expression built the inner core. Some of us decided that the purpose and the reason for a government should be the improvement of life for all of its people. The great idea of conducting a government for the benefit of the people who live under it. I have spent most of my adult life in the service of the people of my country, working to improve their living and laboring standards. I have done what I could in my time to make this great country of ours a little nearer to our conception of the city of God. So we just showed uh, a trailer for Simmons, Francis Perkins and the General Welfare, uh, producer Mick Coet. We hope that you found that interesting. And now I'll hand it back off to Jeffrey Smedberg. Thank you, Daniel. We're very pleased to bring you the next film, The Infiltrators, which was produced uh, late last year. It's quite a new film. It's described as a docu-thriller. It's based on a true story, and there is some uh, reenactment, but most of it is a um, documentary type of film. It's a true story of uh, some young immigrants who got, get arrested by the Border Patrol uh, on purpose. They um, are members of the National Immigrants Youth Alliance, a group of radical dreamers, who are on a mission to stop deportations. And the best place to stop deportations, they think, is in detention. However, once they get inside, things turn out differently. So uh, it's a very current uh, issue about uh, lots of deportations and uh, lots of people in detention. And so please enjoy this film. 
Inside the matrix of 200 detention centers, almost 40,000 immigrants are locked up. According to ICE policy, like your husband's not supposed to be in there at all. Yeah, so it's the national ICE in DC that can do something. 1,400 deportations every day, one a minute. I bet we're just thinking about immigration. My dad was detained in front of me. Well, tonight, I have one question. Um, hi. How can I get in? You're gonna be transported to a detention facility. We're all young illegals. Our mission, stop the deportations. Our strategy, get into the detention center and get people out. There's a woman's side to this detention center. Vidi, are you ready to get detained? I called my mom and my dad and I said, this is what I'm about to do. They were scared for their daughter. Call this number, put your case there, waiting for your call. We can pass out a lot more phone numbers now. I don't know what you're up to, but from now on, things are going to be very different. Her husband was beating her, and she finally went to the cops to turn him in, and then they detained her. They're deporting Benny. His flight leaves tonight. I have somebody that's being deported in a couple hours. His life is in danger. I'm not leaving. We're not leaving. Okay, that was The Infiltrators, the film that the Guardian newspaper called I've Seen No More Braver Americans depicted on scene. Of course, since this movie was made, there's even more people in detentions and more people being deported. But this movie is probably one, an example, except for what we're going through right now, one of the biggest horror shows that the United States government has been involved in. So I hope you will see this movie when we uh, have our show. The next film we have, the next trailer we have, is a movie called Time Thieves. And Time Thieves is an excellently produced film that deals with the amorphic issue of time. Now, time seems very real to us. We follow time wherever we, wherever we go. The clock is ticking with us. But this is a new, a relatively new invention. And it's being used to monetize. It's be, our time is being monetized. When you go and order your own flight online and you check yourself into the airport, those are all things that were done by other people. This movie does an excellent job of giving you a chance to reclaim time and make it your own. So, here's the trailer. This is the clock. The time is one. It is one. Le temps est un enjeu majeur dans le capitalisme. Efficiency became a religion. How is it that we became a culture that began to measure life by clock time? Evolution definitely did not endow us with the ability to think rationally about the value of our time. Le consommateur est une main d'oeuvre innombrable, motivée et gratuite. Facebook is ja erstmal vermeintlich kostenlos. Wir zahlen unseren Daten, wir zahlen mit unserer Zeit. The value comes from the, the presses and the likes and all of these little tiny movements. You keep refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. We see people fighting for their temporal rights. La líder le está contando el tiempo desde que sale de la línea de producción hasta que llega al baño. Y después vienen los problemas, la humillación como ser humano. Una buena democracia es también una cultura où il y a aussi la possibilité pour chacun d'être dans son rythme. We 
know that our time is not very valuable when we have to be on hold because corporations don't have a, the manpower to answer our calls when we call for information. Likewise, we're the ones doing the work when we have to go through self-checkout. We don't have clerks that are doing that for us because it's cheaper for us to do it for the corporations like Home Depot or Safeway. They only get away with that because we let them do that. So the next time you go to a store with self-checkout, don't self-checkout. Make them check you out. Now we're going to see another film, Cubanas Mujeres in Revolución. Jeffrey, you want to introduce us? Sure. Thank you, Daniel. This film, Cubanas Mujeres en Revolución, is uh, describes the continuous role of women in the Cuban Revolution from 1959 through the present. That's 60 years the revolution has been going on. Uh, this covers the period when women were involved in the guerrilla struggle and also in the construction of the new Cuban society through the testimonies of many heroines such as Vilma Espin and Cecilia Sanchez, the founding figures of the revolution, and also of contemporary women from several different sectors of society, reflections of life experience to show how these women were nourished by the values built in the revolution struggle and continues today. So it's a startling uh, trailer and I hope you enjoy it. La Revolución Cubana. Para mí, la Revolución Cubana, yo solo puedo imaginar qué sería de mi familia sin la Revolución. Me hubiera casado a los 14 o 15 años, como tantas mujeres, me hubiera enamorado de cualquier guajiro, me hubiera llenado de hijos y no hubiera estudiado y hecho nada. A las mujeres nos ha dado todo, nos ha dado independencia, nos ha dado libertad. Aquí las mujeres somos ingenieros, médicos, científicos, somos de todo, la discriminación en Cuba no existe de la mujer. Este centro tiene alrededor de 1.400 trabajadores, el 52% somos mujeres. De las que tienen algún nivel de responsabilidad, el 45% somos mujeres. En muchas organizaciones de masas y políticas, eh, la mujer está presente en cargos de dirección decisorios. Sin embargo, en el ámbito familiar, sí todavía hay que hacer mucho. Aide Santa María era una persona muy sensible. Y entonces yo le decía, ay Celia, yo quiero irme para mi casa porque yo quiero volver a ver a mamá. Y ella me transmitía un cariño, una cosa así que como si ella me conociera de toda la vida. Y Vilma es una mujer que tiene una luz larga, tremenda. Quien realmente inició la educación sexual en Cuba fue Vilma en el reconocimiento a la igualdad de cada persona. Y todo eso lo hizo, como decimos en Cuba, sin perder la ternura. Yo creo que la mujer cubana, incluso esas revolucionarias, pero las revolucionarias de la vida cotidiana, con, con un país que hace sacrificios enormes, eh, para salir adelante, son héroes de, 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 de este tiempo también. Cada persona que uno salva en un país donde va a trabajar, cada cosa buena que hace, cada eh, agradecimiento, no es solamente a mí, es a, a mi país, es a mi sistema de salud, a mi sistema de educación, es a mi sistema social. El socialismo no es solo distribuir la riqueza de otra manera en la sociedad, es sobre todo cambiar la concepción de las relaciones humanas. Todo lo que somos es la revolución. As you saw in the trailer we just watched from the film Cubanas, Mujeres en Revolución, the Cuban Revolution dramatically changed the lives of all the women in Cuba. Now I'd like to give our guests a chance to speak a little more about their involvement in real work and the promise of what our program will bring to the audience. 
And uh, Sarah, would you like to speak first? Thank you, Jeffrey. Uh, I have been involved for either the beginning or nearly the beginning. And each year it's a project that I take on with, when I was working, it was more work for me to do now that I'm retired. It's I still, it's like, oh, I have this responsibility. But the overwhelming feeling that I have and why I do this is because the, the need of the working people for respect. I feel working people, need a lot more respect, not only better pay, better working conditions, but also just to be valued for what they do. And it's very difficult. So every year when this festival comes out, it's one, two, three weeks. We've had longer festivals, we've had shorter festivals. But at each festival, it gives a chance for somebody, some group of people who just go every day and do their job, not asking for too much more other than a paycheck and a, and a decent life. and and gives them a chance to be on the stage, to be on the screen. And we've been all over the world. I mean, we've had shown um, fishermen on, on tuna boats. We've been coal miners. You have a, you name a job. This show, this film festival has highlighted them in some way. And that's the value of the show and that's the value of this festival. Thank you, Sarah. Daniel, please uh, tell us what you're, feelings are about our labor film festival thank you jeffrey and thank you to commit community tv and voices from the village you've been a wonderful support for the real work film festival over the years and we can't express our gratitude strongly enough now for those of you who have just watched this program hopefully you saw something that inspired you and i would like to invite you to join with us and become part of real work so that you can express your feelings and something that interests you. You can pick a film and uh, present it in a venue around the, the uh, Bay Area. We have shows from Santa Cruz to Watsonville to Monterey to Pacific Grove, and we even have shows, films showing in San Jose. So this is actually a very wide ranging uh, program that you can become involved in and help uh, spread the message to all of the people who need help uh, for a, a, a tr attaining a better standard of living and working conditions. We also want to invite all of our viewers to become more involved in our program. You can select a film and show it yourselves. You can pick whatever interests you that relates to labor, and we'll help you find a venue where you can present that film. We'll do, we have a lot of expertise that we can support you in that endeavor. So please feel free to contact the real work laborfilmfestival.org and let us know how you would like to participate. We hope that you enjoyed this program and we look forward to presenting more films for your uh, viewing interest to help people in their terms of employment and their conditions of employment. That's what we're all about. Thank you very much, have a good evening. Thank you, Daniel, and thank you, Sarah, for joining me in this program. I'm Jeffrey Smedberg. I'm your host this evening on the Voices from the Village program. And all of these films that we have previewed tonight, we are going to be including in our festival this year. And we don't have a schedule set yet, but you can find out our schedule as we develop it on our website realwork.org, that's R-E-E-L-W-O-R-K dot O-R-G. Some of the films we will probably be showing virtually, uh, streaming them online, and some of them we will be showing uh, at uh, physical venues later on in the year. Again, I want to thank our viewing audience for joining us with this program about real work on 
voices from the village. Good night. Thank you, Jeffrey, and thank you, Community TV, and thank you, Voices from the Village. You've been a, a wonderful supporter of the Real Work Film Festival throughout the years. We couldn't have done it without you. We have many, many other sponsors who support us in this film festival throughout the year and over the years, and we are very indebted to them for their support. This is the clock. The time is one. It is one. Le temps est un enjeu majeur dans le capitalisme. Efficiency became a religion. How is it that we became a culture that began to measure life by clock time? Evolution definitely did not endow us with the ability to think rationally about the value of our time. Le consommateur est une main-d'œuvre innombrable, motivée et gratuite. Facebook ist ja erstmal vermeintlich kostenlos. Wir zahlen mit unseren Daten, wir zahlen mit unserer Zeit. The value comes from the, the presses and the likes and all of these little tiny movements. You keep refreshing and refreshing and refreshing. We see people fighting for their temporal rights. La líder le está contando el tiempo desde que sale de la línea de producción hasta que llega al baño. Y después vienen los problemas, la humillación como ser humano. Una buena democracia es también una cultura donde hay también la posibilidad para cada uno de estar en su ritmo.